Let's just friends, welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a lifestyle, and Jesus Christ is truly King of all kings and Lord of all lords. Hallelujah. Now, a few days back, we did a study in 1 John, and I felt led to do a brief run through the entire book. So that's what we're doing, and we are today in chapter 2, and we're picking up at around verse 12. Now, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this subject, but I find this interesting because Jesus said, in order to enter the kingdom of heaven, you must be born again. And the man he was speaking to replied to him, you expect me to crawl back into my mother's womb and to be reborn? And Jesus explains, no, you're thinking physically. I'm speaking spiritually. You must be reborn spiritually. And that's what John is kind of feeding off here is that mentality, that parable, if you would, an illustration from this world that clearly illustrates what is taking place in the next world, in the spiritual world. And so in verse 12, we pick up and he says, I write unto you, little children, because your sins have been forgiven you. In verse 13, I write unto you fathers because you've known him from the beginning. I write unto you young men because you've overcome the wicked one. Then he repeats himself. He says, I write unto you little children. You have known the father. I write unto you fathers. In verse 14, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write unto you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one. So John is taking an illustration from this life and applying it to the spiritual life. And when we come into the kingdom for the very first time, we come in as babies in Christ. That's why 1 Peter chapter 2 tells us that we are to desire the sincere milk of the word. A baby, an infant, survives off of milk, not meat. And when we first come into the kingdom, that's exactly what we're thriving on. We're thriving on the milk of the word of God. But we're not to stay infants as we nourish ourselves on the word of God with fellowship from other believers in prayer and communion with the Most High. As we do these things, we begin to develop. And so where we were once babes, now we become children. And where we were once children, now we become young men. And where we were once young men, we become grown men. And this is a process, just like in the real life, so in the spiritual life, it cannot be rushed. I remember when I was a young Christian, when I first came into the family of God, I was so hungry. We're talking some 40 years ago. I was so hungry for the things of God that I wanted to grow so fast, just like a regular child. You take a seven-year-old child, he's ready to drive a car. He's ready to do things that he sees his dad do around the house that if left by himself could endanger him. And so it is with us. We have to be very careful that we don't step into things spiritually that could cause us harm. And so that's why we need mentors. We need pastors. We need people who care about us, spiritual fathers who take us under their wing. They walk us through this early life in Christ and they teach us how to be true and faithful followers. And so what we must do is we must evaluate ourselves and ask ourselves the question, are we babies in Christ? Well, if we've been in the family of God for years, certainly we should not be babies in Christ. The only reason we would remain babies in Christ is because we're malnourished. We haven't grown. But if we're growing, then we should be able to see those growth stages and we should be able to see evidence of such growth. Are you becoming more knowledgeable on the things of God? Are you beginning to see things from the spiritual viewpoint as opposed to a carnal viewpoint? Does your life represent and exhibit a life worthy of a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you casting away the things of this world? Are you pursuing the things of God? Are you spending more time in God's word? Are you spending more time in prayer? Are you spending more time pondering, questioning, meditating upon the things you read in the word of God? Are you looking for others who are looking for truth? Are you praying more? Are your prayers like the prayers of so many others? Or when people hear you pray, would they say to you as they did the Lord Jesus Christ, teach me how to pray. 
There's something real. There's something supernatural. There's something connected. There's something different about the way that you communicate with the Most High. Teach me that quality. Are you in control of your attitudes? Or do your attitudes and your emotions control you? Are there strong disciplines in your life? Or is your life carefree and loose? These are the questions that you must ask yourself, friends, so that you can determine where you are in your Christian growth, where you are in your journey. And if in that evaluation you see that you have fallen short, well, friends, in order to see something different, you're going to have to do something different. And I don't need to tell you what that is. You know what it is, but you must be the one to do it. If someone wants to run 10 miles, they have to start with a half a mile. If someone wants to lift 400 pounds, they have to start with 50 pounds. So friends, just use some logic in determining what you must do to get to where you want to be. If you want to be able to sit down and read an entire book of God's word and really get something out of it, start with a chapter or two. But you have to start somewhere. Well, friends, I pray that this word has challenged you and blessed you. I pray that you are no longer on the milk of the word, that you're truly savoring the meat of the word, that you're growing in your life in Jesus, that you're becoming more like him and less like yourself, more like his kingdom and less like this world. And that in all things, friends, when people look at you, they truly see something different. Now, as Yahweh wills, and until tomorrow, I will see you on the next video.